This video is provided for informational purposes only. The contents of this video cannot substitute for proper training under and implementation of industry standards applicable to servicing and testing of electrical equipment. You must carefully review and follow OSHA, NFPA, and other regulatory requirements, equipment manufacturer's instructions, and your company's safety procedures when conducting any testing or servicing of electrical equipment. The demonstrations in this presentation were performed by trained professionals in a controlled environment. Do not attempt to induce an arc fault, arc flash, or any other condition that could potentially damage electrical test tools or equipment, or otherwise create any increased risk of personal injury. When you make electrical measurements, safety should always be your first consideration. To be a qualified person, you must have knowledge of the proper use, inspection, and limitations of your test instrument. NFPA 70E specifies that all qualified and unqualified employees who work in areas that may be exposed to electrical hazards must undergo training that qualifies them to perform such work. And qualified persons must have additional training on electrical and power systems to the point where they have the skills and knowledge to understand basic power system design and inherent dangers. For example, radial, loop, main tie main, double-ended substation, and the like. Qualified persons should also have training on manufacturers' recommended operating procedures for the specific devices being worked on, as well as their condition of maintenance. Check NFPA 70E and with your employer to determine the level of training you need to perform your work safely. With the right training as your foundation, your ability to plan your work carefully follow safe measurement procedures, and use the right tools can significantly reduce your chances of an accident. You must be a qualified person before attempting to take electrical measurements in an energized electrical environment. Both OSHA and NFPA 70E require that work be performed on de-energized equipment. However, if your employer can show that the task you need to perform is infeasible in a de-energized state, the work can be done on the energized unit. In this case, an energized electrical work permit may be required. An energized electrical work permit may not be required for certain conditions and tasks. For example, when performing testing, troubleshooting, voltage testing, thermography, and other kinds of visual inspections. However, for these tasks, the restricted approach boundary cannot be crossed by the unqualified person doing the work. Under no circumstances can an unqualified person cross the limited approach boundary unless they are continuously escorted by a qualified person. Only a qualified person using safe work practices and PPE is allowed to perform the work. Review the NFPA 70E and your company's work rules to ensure you are following the guidelines relevant to your work situation. When you arrive at the job site, look over your work environment. Where will you mount your meter and place your other equipment? Be sure to identify a clear escape route you can use in case of an emergency. Do you have enough clearance to gain access to the equipment in question and to work comfortably? Are environmental hazards present, such as tree branches, ice, height restrictions, or water? Do you have enough light and ventilation? Make sure you have another qualified person to assist you who also understands electrical safety. It's a best practice to work with another qualified person on high energy circuits. Finally, make sure someone else knows where you're working. On conductors or circuits operating at 50 volts or more, NFPA 70E requires you to visually inspect your test instrument and test leads for apparent damage before you begin the job. We'll review some practical steps on how to inspect your test instrument later in this presentation. You must then verify your meter is working properly before going into the work area. In the industry, this process is sometimes referred to as the Live Dead Live, LDL, or three-point testing. Use available system voltage like a wall socket or an electronic source such as a proving unit that sources a fixed AC voltage. The advantage of a proving unit is that no PPE is required to verify proper function of your test instrument, and it can be used when there is no other voltage source available. After safely performing the lockout tagout procedure, now you can verify absence of voltage in the work area. Wearing proper PPE, measure the target circuit and incoming line side to determine if they are de-energized. If the incoming line side is energized, it must be properly guarded. Verify your test instrument again on a known live voltage source after the absence of voltage test. If your test instrument still works correctly, you can now safely work on the de-energized system. 
Be aware that in some circumstances, such as when the line side of a breaker or switch is still energized, PPE may be required. When taking single phase measurements, always connect the grounded lead first, the hot lead second. Verify the grounding point being used is a good one. Do not use painted surfaces, loose bare metal parts, or parts with grease or other contaminants on them. After taking your reading, disconnect the energized lead first, the grounded lead second. It's also a good idea to follow the experienced electrician's advice. Use alligator clips for one connection and a probe using one hand. But use common sense. Sometimes you need both hands to make a good measurement. The safest place to measure voltage is where the lowest energy is available. For example, if you are measuring voltage on a breaker panel, identify the lowest rated breaker available and make your measurement there. This way, you have more protection between yourself and the potential hazard. The safest choice is to work on de-energized circuits and follow proper lockout, tagout procedures. After shutting off the circuit, use a contact voltage tester to help verify that your test point is de-energized using the steps previously discussed in the live dead live example. NFPA 70E specifies that test instruments shall be stored in a clean and dry area and properly inspected and tested before each use. To ensure your equipment is ready when you are, consider implementing the following inspection steps. 1. Look for the CAT3 or CAT4 rating on the front of your test instruments. If you use test instruments on or near 480 or 600 volt circuits, you should use 600 or 1000 volt CAT3 or 600 volt CAT4 test instruments. 2. Look for approval symbols from independent testing agencies. 3. Ensure the fuse is the one recommended by the manufacturer. 4. Check the condition of your meter or test instrument. Look for signs of damage like a broken case, a faded display, or other problems. Check your manual to see if the ohms and continuity circuit is protected to the same level as volts. If the protection level is not listed, ask for written confirmation from the manufacturer. 5. Examine your test leads for such features as finger guards, cat ratings, and look for frayed or broken wires. Check the length of exposed metal and make sure the tips are the appropriate length, such as 4 mm for CAT3 and CAT4 environments. Remember, test probes are designed for a variety of test environments. What is appropriate for a printed circuit board in a CAT2 environment may not be appropriate for 480 or 600 volt circuits. In a high energy setting like CAT3 or CAT4, be sure your test probes have a minimum amount of exposed metal. Shorter test probe tips reduce the amount of exposed metal when working in tight spaces. This helps eliminate the chance of a phase-to-phase -phase or phase-to-ground short should you become distracted or the probe tip slips off an energized conductor. It is good practice to consider replacing your test leads and probes annually if they receive heavy use. Test leads and probes are your first line of defense for making safe electrical measurements. 6. You can use your test instrument to check for internal breaks in your test leads. Turn to the ohms function, then short your leads together. The unit should read close to zero. With the leads still shorted, jiggle the leads and look for an intermittent open circuit, which could signal an internal break. 7. Test your fuses by configuring your test instruments to measure ohms, then inserting one end of your test lead into the ohm input jack and the test probe into the amp or milliamp jack. A blown fuse would read as an open circuit. The actual resistance value will vary depending on the model used. At a minimum, verify that the unit does not read OL, which stands for open circuit. 8. Finally, if you've ever had a blown fuse or mishap with your test instrument, make sure you get it checked out and properly calibrated by a person qualified to do this type of work before using it. Never replace a damaged fuse with a fuse not specified by the manufacturer for that specific piece of test equipment. The Fluke meter system, which includes the meter's internal circuitry and fuses and the test probes shipped with the instrument, works together to properly interrupt fault currents that exceed 10,000 amps. These fuses may be the only thing standing between the user and a serious incident. If the test instrument is fused correctly, the only result will be a damaged fuse, which is a small price to pay. Check your tools for proper insulation, and make sure they are rated and tested for the level of hazard that exists where you are working. Many test instruments look similar, so make sure you know what yours is designed to do. If your test instrument aligns with these guidelines, congratulations. You are successfully managing some of the risks inherent in making electrical measurements.
Planning your work carefully, following safe measurement procedures, and using the right tools can significantly reduce your chances of an accident. While you can't totally eliminate the dangers of working with electricity, with careful planning and applying what you've learned here today, you can reduce them. On behalf of everyone at Fluke Corporation, thank you for watching.